Locarno Festival. It's a great pleasure to introduce uh, a guest sitting here with me behind the table. I'll begin with the producer, Sol Bandi, Yamila Benske, producer, Inga Birkenfeld, actress, Hans Jochen Wagner, Johanna Bokalek, and the director, Jan Speckenbach. Well, a round of applause would not be bad. <laughs> well, uh, most of you have seen the film this morning at a press screening, so if there are any questions, please raise your hand. And for our guests, if there are questions in languages you don't understand, we have the headsets that you can put on and uh, please. Okay, just. C'est en français. Ok, ça va. <rire> Alors, je suis pris pour votre film. J'ai ai, ai aimé beaucoup votre film. Je trouve que tout au début du festival, on a une grande chance de découvrir un bon film. Et je pense que c'est cette vie du quotidien, de cette routine, de cette vie, de cette babelle et tout ça, vous avez réussi à mettre dans les mêmes, dans les mêmes films. C'est très difficile, votre travail. Euh, mais je vous laisse expliquer votre idée générale du film. We love the fact that you love the film, but who's the question for? The question is for who? Everybody. Oui, c'est ça. C'est la dernière chose que j'ai dit, que je les laisse nous faire, je vous laisse nous fait un résumé de vos intentions pour euh, faire ce film. Je pense que ce serait la meilleure chose. Et après, on va discuter. Pas entièrement compris la question, mais uh, but I'm going to try. But I'm going to speak in English, nevertheless. Yes, okay. Yes. But okay. well, thanks uh, for, for your kind words. No problem. Um, if I, don't, if I didn't totally get it, you just rephrase the question. Um, but I'm glad that you like the everyday, uh, the everyday scenery in a way, and then to find the abyss uh, within that everyday life, uh, which was the point of departure, of course. You start with uh, something that is very common to all of us, and, uh, and then you find the, the little point that is not working on the left, like a grain of sand that is in the machinery and it starts to, be, to have an enormous effect on everything. Uh, actually, the reason why uh, I, I was so interested from the very beginning, by the way, of, uh, of writing to, to, uh, to have an anachronological ending, so to actually uh, tell the beginning of our story only in the end of the film, is very much linked to that, uh, to that question, so that you now, after you have uh, gone through the journey of Nora and of Philip, or through the sufferance of, of the husband and the, the journey of self-discovery of the woman, and then you will, when you start or have already meet, met the characters, and then when you, when you get in the ending where you see an everyday scene of uh, the life of a couple or of a family, uh, the vision is sharpened for every detail and doesn't work. Or, you know, you, you can understand every gesture, every word, every every view much better than you would have if we had would have started with that scene in the, in the first place. So it's pretty much linked to the structure of the film, actually, what the, what the remark was about. I've seen the movie for the third time today and I'm fascinated by the structure. It's like a triptych of me. Why did you choose this way to tell the story? Because I think it's a bit like um, you get the thesis and you get the antithesis, or the antithesis, and then you get some sort of a synthesis in the end, which isn't really, but it is at the same time. So that makes the, the three parts and the, 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 the structure. Um, and that was something I was very fond about because actually, I have to tell you, I think the film might have been much easier to write. It would have just gone with Nora. 
much easier just to tell the story about a woman than go somewhere. It would have been much easier to go with Philip and to tell about his sufferings and, and, uh, and, and this fight for understanding something that is never understandable. And, but I thought you have to talk about both sides, both sides of the coin. It's the same thing you should talk about. And from the moment uh, on when I decided to call the film Freedom, that structure made even more sense. Because when you start to think about that word, it loses sense. You can't, you can never really hold uh, on it. Because I mean, whenever you think, well, this is freedom, actually, when you say, well, okay, that person may be, for you not. So it's very, you always have to talk about two sides when you talk about freedom. That's it. Because it's, you know, that's the, you can't really define it without talking about freedom of the other. That was the, the, the subject point, in a way. So that was the structure. And then to, to again, bring those two characters that you have met during the film together, but together not as a, as a solution, but as part of the whole, uh, the whole problem, actually. That was the thrilling part of it. What was very uh, intriguing, actually, we started with the end, we started to shoot with the ending of the film. So we started to build the family first, and then we didn't meet anymore, you know, shooting over quite a long period of time, like, I think it's two and a half years. So uh, that was, for, even for us personally, for us and the actors and everybody, we had this, this souvenir of the family that was there and that would never meet again. And that was something I think, at least for me, I mean, you can tell if that is it, important for you, for your work as an actor, I would be really interested in that actually, that there was something to it. But I always, I, I liked that, that I, I, I knew uh, these guys. And then we could, we could start to destructure the whole thing. I, but I knew as a filmmaker that we would come back to it in the film. We have a question here. Well, I, uh, I have a, a strange look at the, at the films. I did enjoy, uh, it was, uh, even uh, too normal, a uh, normal life, uh, but uh, very well done. Uh, and it was interesting to follow it. What uh, was uh, for me not normal, it was the fact that, that in your scene uh, with sex, uh, there is no condom. And uh, I was very surprised because they act uh, the child <laughs> and uh, they take risk. <laughs> yeah, she's working there. Well, I understand that you were uh, you were uh, in the film in a strange situation, and uh, well, maybe I didn't I didn't give a look, uh, but uh, it seems to me that it was a condom in the, in the scene. And the other said, and I asked you why, or uh, if it's not true, uh, yeah, I mean, the fact that I didn't see you right. And then, uh, and, uh, I was very impressed with the last scene. Uh, this uh, building, uh, it's incredible, it seems uh, uh, not natural, but I think it still it really exists. Uh, and where it is? <laughs> I love your question. For the, first, for the first question, are you talking when you talk about this? So just a second, here's the mic. I have a question. Are you talking about the situation of the shooting that we didn't use the color? Or are you sh sorry, sorry about that? The shooting, the shooting. Yes, it was a little bit surprised. Okay, so because I have very courageous actors. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. No. I don't, are you talking about the sex scene? No, 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 the scene, no, the scene with you, no, because uh, you... The scene of, of the Hans? The scene of Hans, Hans and, you know, and then the Inga on, on the scene. No, maybe no. They, they, can answer, they can answer that, either one of those. I, uh, I hate condoms. <laughs> That's right, but... Uh, no, uh, my question is now, if you, you think that we... Uh, really made sex in the scene, or do you think why the character didn't use the condom? It's a difference. Well, uh, no, I, yeah, it was really uh, realistic. Uh, yeah, but I, I would never, I'm not, that's not my business to make real love. <laughs> but, it, but it's, uh, no, it's, nothing is less sexy than making a sex scene, or you're concentrated what you have to do, where you have to turn around, where the camera, if your partner is okay, and so on. So it wasn't nearly existed. If, it's a wrong 
think, but uh, they are real actors in parts that are able to... Yeah, may I just point out that this is not that kind of movie. <laughs> no, but I think it's a, it's a compliment. Yeah, I think it's a compliment. I think it's a great compliment if you were... Yeah, yeah, I'm happy if about that. Thousands, if you have thousands, they were really making no. love a lot. So life's fantastic. But, but the student, I can assure you, so in, on the level of the actors, the problem of the condom wasn't there because they would never make love in that scene. In this, on, the, on the level of the, uh, of the characters, that's a different thing because then we are in the story. And then, well, that would, that that's really a good question. She is a little bit shy. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, 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 that's okay. We got to the matter. Say Vangelica. No, but it's true to, to think about it. Why it's really a question that he had a Philip has an affair and he's not. That's true. That's a question uh, whether he is a, 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 in this situation he would count on having a baby, perhaps or not. So it's a question. But I think uh, in this case he he would really pay attention that he she don't get pregnant. No, no, but not about pregnancy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially her. It's clear, but this is not a dialogue. It's a press conference. Mi scusi, è una. Mandiamo un po' in avanti le cose, se no poi rimaniamo bloccati. Grazie comunque. That was the second question about the end. The one we took you to yesterday. So um, you wanted me to comment on the building in the end of the of the song. It is not a real building, I can tell you. It's not there, so we can't go there. But I think the idea was to make it uh, like a building in a close future in a way, so that it, it could be there, but it's not. So it's in the close future or in the past, but then in, a long, uh, in the past long ago. So um, when she goes towards there's something, but you know, but it's not real, and you can't go there. It's not close to Brussels, at least. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, it was, and what kind of challenge it was to produce such an ambitious film that defies categories and genres and tries to, and achieves to tell a story in a non-linear way, whereas modern cinema goes with the three-act stories and so on. So how, how, how did it come about to put the money and all the um, well, it, it was a challenge, true. Um, we had to knock on many doors, um, but we kind of also tried to embrace this, this situation that we found, and this is why we also came up with this idea to shoot the film over a long period of time, three chunks. So as as Jan already said, we started shooting the first or what you, what you, chronologically the first part of the film, which was the last one we shot um, in seven days in Berlin um, with the family, the family dinner. Then there was a large break where we continued to finance the film. We already had little parts that we could show people as a proof of concept, basically. Because one thing that is also interesting to mention is that Jan and I, we both graduated together at film school with his previous feature film called Die Vermissten. And it was very important for Jan to shoot this film in a very different way, with a much more fluid camera, with a smaller crew, to be more flexible, um, and so that hopefully different kinds of images would be able to yeah, shoot them if possible. And, um, and so after we, we shot this first proof of concept and we continued to finance the film with the generous support of our local fund, Medium World Berlin Brandenburg, they were the first ones to, to believe in the project. And then other funds followed, and the TV station followed. Um, ZDF, Kleines Fernsehspiel. Um, we then shot the second part in Bratislava because one part of money that has also arrived very early was from our Slovak co-producer, Peter Badaj, of B-Film. So it was always very clear that we would shoot parts of the film in Bratislava. And then we shot the second chunk of the film in Vienna and Bratislava. And then another time passed. Um, and we shot the last part of the film with the family that was left behind in Berlin. Um, so really, the shooting 
uh, took about two years. And then the editing process was also quite long too because Jan edited himself. And um, yeah, finally, after a long time, we're here and very excited to show the film for the first time. Uh, you've already seen it, but most of us haven't. And uh, yeah. How close did you get to the character of Laura? We understand her. Second question, there's a famous song near the end of the movie, and you see it am Ende Marlene Dietrich singing it, uh, If I could have a wish, when ich mir was wünschen dürfte, wenn sie sich was wünschen dürften, eine gute oder schlechte Zeit, if you could have a wish, a bad time or a good time, what's your wish? Good time. Thank you. It's always the same way uh, uh, Took, it takes me until I decide to to say yes to the script. So I read the script from uh, Jan, and I was actually very interested in the in this three-part thing. And the most interesting uh, thing for me was yeah, any, uh, was that the uh, last scene, or the first scene of the film was in the, uh, was in the ending. And of course, it was difficult for me to start with the end. So because I had to. Well, to start the beginning of the film, no, the end of the film in the beginning, without no, knowing what she will, uh, how she will be. So I decided already in the, uh, at the first part of shooting how Nora could be. But the, the, of course, what makes me, or what I was interested in, because there is the play for the theatre, uh, uh, Nora uh, in a doll's house, or something. And um, I sometimes uh, thought, oh, maybe I could play this, but I I find, in a way, it's sometimes a bit old-fashioned. I don't know, yeah. But I was mostly interested in the part, what is about Nora when she slams the door, or smashes the door, and she walks away. And um, in this film, um, well, we tried uh, to, to, uh, to talk or to, to tell the story of this woman when she leaves the family and, and, and when, she, we, well, when she tries to find, to give her way in her, her life a different or a new direction. And of course, uh, the, the, the very interesting question is, I think, what do we think is freedom? Freedom for me, freedom in our times, and in our culture. And, well, Jan, uh, this is the question to Jan again, because Jan, he interpreted uh, his vision of what he thinks, what is freedom for him, maybe, or what, what it could be. But, um, yeah. And, um, well, I'm, I'm a mother as well. And, um, and life changes a lot if you are a mother and sometimes you think I want to be free. For me, I said that there was something that I think is very, very important. The question of the change of identity is a resource that we can recover to change, to find another commencement of life. Et l'autre, c'est la fin du film. Les suicides, si des suicides, c'est aussi une sortie. Est-ce que quand on est vraiment coincé, c'est mieux de partir Alors, c'est deux questions. Les choses vont être et la fin, comment est-ce qu'on aborde Oui, pour le ending, je ne suis pas sûr si c'est un suicide, mais c'est quelque chose que vous pouvez interpréter dans cette façon, je pense, mais vous pouvez, je pense, interpréter. Uh, into, interpret it in another way. So uh, I'm not so sure if she's really doing so. But if, yeah, I mean, you can think about the question. The uh, the remark about identity uh, is very true, and that's something which is very much linked to the subject of vanishing or of disappearing. Because it allows me, as a as a writer and a filmmaker, to talk about that subject of that identity. Where does it start and where does it end? Are you are you able, as your hope, I think, to recreate yourself? <coughs> uh, is it possible or not? Sometimes, we tr well, we, I think we tend to say we really would like to, we all could, because we want to be autonomous. But then, again, aren't we all structured by the past, by the 
life that you already have lived until then. So you can you can discuss it with Nora if you talk about it if, um, as a figure that has tried to uh, to reinvent herself, some person to give herself a new identity, which is definitely a way that can you go, or is she losing her personality? That's the question I was always interested in why why working on it. And I think it's linked to the openness of the ending that I I can't tell if it's either or. But what is important, I think it's a quest. You need a quest for uh, freedom, you need a quest for identity, you need to always try to find out what it is what, what it, it, it really is. And if you don't, then you then you lost. Well, unfortunately, our time is already over, but not the uh, opportunity to speak with the crew of uh, Freedom Friday. We can all meet again this afternoon after the screening at the Fairy, uh, after the screening at uh, half past four at the Spazio Cinema Forum. We will be reconvening with the cast and crew of the film. So, thank you for being here today and thank you from the heart to our guests.